Welcome to Love and Abuse, the show about helping you identify poisonous communication and toxic behavior. You deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. That's why it's important that you learn to pinpoint manipulative and controlling behavior so that you keep your power and your sanity. I'm your host, Paul Coliani. Welcome to another episode of Love and Abuse. All the information on this podcast is meant for educational purposes only. Always seek a professional for your mental health and well-being. And with that said, let's get right into what I'm going to talk about today. I'm just going to read you an email and make some comments on it. Um, this is an inspiring email. It's an encouraging email. And, um, you know, some people that are listening are in relationships. Well, probably most people that are listening right now are in relationships. And some people have to deal with emotionally abusive people, manipulative people in their life, and they're not necessarily in a romantic relationship with them. Sometimes it's your mom. Sometimes it's that stupid coworker. <laughs> Sorry, but sometimes this is how we think and feel, and we just don't want to deal with this person. They're such a jerk. And sometimes it's a family member. Sometimes it's a friend and uh all kinds of people out there that can show up in our lives in a toxic way. And um, in this particular email, this is a person who was married, and I'm just going to read you the email, and I'll keep out any of the identifying details uh, to keep their anonymity. Uh, This person wrote, I would like to thank you for a great podcast. I am in this country, I'll keep that private, and your podcast has been very helpful to guide me through each step of what is emotional abuse and what behavior to expect from the abuser. Without your podcast, I think it would be difficult to see the whole picture, but with my therapist sessions and your voice plugged into my ears on my daily walks, I have managed to leave my wife. For several years, I have had problems with lack of energy, tiredness, bad digestion, and stress. But when I found the cause of my problem, it all disappeared within two months. I have been emotionally abused for more than 20 years, And thanks to your podcast, I've got my family and friends back again. The stress has drained me for so long that I would probably just survived a couple more years. So thanks also for saving my life. Wow. So thank you for writing that and for saying this. And the reason I'm reading this today, uh, one, is because what he said at the very end, thank you for saving my life. He saved his life. He took those big steps that you sometimes need to take in a relationship in your life. Those are the big steps that change your life. And I think it's very important to remember that sometimes you have to take those steps. Sometimes you do. And I'm not saying that those steps equal leaving someone or getting someone arrested. And I'm not saying that you have to do those specific things. I'm just saying that when you decide to take responsibility for what happens to you, you usually end up taking very big steps. Because I look at someone like my mom, who stayed in an abusive relationship for well over 40 years, and um, it was 39 and a half years, way too long, but she stayed in that relationship for a very long time, waiting for my stepfather to leave. She just waited. And she waited longer and longer. And every decade that went by, she kept waiting because she was too afraid. She was scared as hell to take those big steps that needed to be taken for her. So her life changed once they got divorced. And yes, he actually did finally leave the relationship. But it took 40 years. So it is possible that the person you're with, if you have any inkling of wanting them to leave or get out of your life, it is possible they'll do it. But how long are you going to wait? How long will it take for them to make another decision? Uh, Typically in emotionally abusive relationships, the person that's doing the abusing usually feels like they have enough control 
that there's no reason to leave. And if you're around someone that has control over you, then why would they leave? Control comes in many forms, but it often comes in the form of uh, guilting you, making you feel bad about yourself, uh, making you think you're worthless, making you think you're inferior, making you think you're dumb, and all of these negative attributes that nobody wants to feel about themselves, as long as you believe those things, you're less likely to leave because they're going to convince you, where else are you going to go? I mean, I'm the only one that's accepting you, so who else is going to accept you? You're too old, you're too fat, you're too stupid, you're not a good decision maker, you're you're going to break up the family, you, 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 it's all your fault, it's all your responsibility, and it can wear you down and wear you out, and it becomes your new paradigm, it becomes your new belief system, and uh, harmful people cause you to think this way, cause you to think in a toxic manner, and so to get out of that space, like this guy, he was in it for 20 years, and you know, I know people are listening, have been in this for a lot longer, but 20 years is a long time. So in order for him to get out of a 20-year pummeling, you know, maybe that's inappropriate to say, but it sure looks like this, he was pummeled emotionally for 20 years. How do you get out of that? It, it takes a massive leap inside you. It takes a massive step forward in your psyche, in your spirit, in your soul to tell yourself, I've had enough. It's enough. I don't care what the consequences are. I'm not saying that you should not care what the consequences are. I'm saying that you come to a place, a breaking point inside of you where you finally decide you have to do something because the situation is not going to change. That's a huge, huge leap because where you're coming from, at least in this guy's case, he is coming from 20 years of being emotionally abused. So that is everything I've already said, the guilting and the low self-worth and the low self-esteem and the feeling of being inferior or stupid. You have all these things working against you because you developed a belief system that maybe you are that way, or at least parts of you believe that maybe that's the case because you were convinced by someone you thought you loved and trusted. And if you love and trust them and they're saying these things, it must be true, right? I mean, that's how we convince ourselves is that we believe someone that is harmful to us. So he decided to take that big step, that big, scary step with all the attachments to marriage. He took it anyway. The reason I'm saying that is not because I'm trying to convince you to do anything. I mean, this is your life, your decisions. I'm saying this because if you have an inkling of wanting to do something like this, A, it's possible, and B, you can do it. If you're listening to a show like this, you obviously want direction. You obviously want guidance. And if somebody that's in a relationship for 20 years, it could be 40 years, it could be 60 years, it doesn't matter. There's a point where you just get so beat down, that's where you are. You can't go any further, but it does get to the point inside you that you can't handle it anymore. You will be emotionally and maybe physically dead, but certainly emotionally beaten down where what this person experienced, a lack of energy, tiredness, bad digestion, stress, and two months. That's all it took, two months. And I've heard that number before. After two months, you start gaining something in your life. Your vitality comes back. Your light starts to shine again. And you feel better because you took away the radiation. You were living in this toxic place and then somebody came along and removed the radioactive elements and it took a couple months to heal from that. And I know he has, you know, I'm going to guess he has a lot more healing to do. But finally, that radioactive element is gone. There's no more toxicity. And now he's actually starting to think without the influence of someone else, good or bad. He's just thinking in his own mind, in his own clarity. His clarity is developing. His brain is coming back to him. His life is coming back to him. 
And so I look at that and I am so proud of this person. I'm so proud of you. The person who wrote to me, thank you so much for sharing that. It wasn't me who saved your life. I gave you direction. It was you who saved your life. You took some massive steps. And I know it was scary. Because if you have any of these beliefs about yourself that don't serve you, the step is bigger. The leap is a giant leap. And for you to go from a place of all these negative beliefs about yourself into a giant positive step forward, it's a difficult task. But is absolutely possible and probable, and you can do it. You can do it. Fear holds us back from taking these giant leaps. But you can still do it. You can still take a giant leap. Even if that giant leap is maybe looking at your boundaries for the first time ever and saying, you know what, this is what I'll accept and this is what I won't accept and I won't settle for anything less. And if anybody crosses my boundaries, I'll make it clear that that's unacceptable and I will take care of myself. I will love myself. I will respect myself. I care about me so much that I won't allow other people to hurt me. That's where he is. And I want you to be there too if you're not already there. Care about you so much that you won't allow bad behavior. You just won't. You don't deserve it. So that's the first thing I wanted to say about him saving his own life because he had to do the work. That is work. There's work involved there. But he decided that instead of staying longer in a relationship that kept wearing him down, that he would take the big leap, which is usually a giant obstacle. It's usually something big. You have to get over the the hard part of doing something like this. But the rest of it kind of falls into place because there's no more toxic element. And if there's no toxic element, you're not as tired. You're, you're thinking more clearly. You're not as stressed. You're, again, thinking more clearly. And the longer you stay away from the toxic element, the better you feel. The better you feel, again, the clearer you think. And thinking clearly is a massive bonus, massive side effect to getting away from someone that's toxic. When you're around them, you can't think clearly. And I've heard from a lot of people, you know, my life's over. This is it. This is how it's going to be for the rest of my life because they're not thinking clearly. And if you're not thinking clearly, you probably won't make good decisions. I mean, this is how emotional abuse can work. The crazy making, the gaslighting is that they don't want you to think clearly. They want to muddy the neural pathways in your brain so that when you start to have an independent thought, you question yourself, you doubt yourself, you're not feeling confident in your decisions, so you don't make those decisions. And so now you have a reliance upon the person that's abusing you, and this creates what I've talked about before, the traumatic bonding that occurs. And this is where the show gets its name, love and abuse. You are loved by them and abused by them. You love them even though you're getting abused. You equate love with abuse. And then it becomes an enmeshed, intertwined uh, mess that you really have trouble getting out of because you don't know which way's up. And being in that space, and I, I know I'm talking worst case scenarios. Not everyone listening is in this worst case scenario, but this is where it leads. This is where it goes, is that you have all these muddied pathways in your brain and you're not sure what to do or what to say, but the bigger picture is you're probably in a toxic environment and you need to rid yourself or separate yourself from the toxic elements and get out of this relationship radiation. So I want you to be safe. I want you to feel safe. I want you to feel good inside yourself. And what this person did is decide that he had enough. The, the breakdown happened inside of him probably many years ago. But the impetus, something caused him to want to take this big step toward healing, toward peace in his life. And I know the big step does, like I said, involve that obstacle. Because the big step means I have to confront this person. I have to do this next thing. I have to, whatever, leave the house or um, avoid this person or separate or divorce. There's all kinds of things that can be grouped into this one big step. I get it. 
but there is a point where you won't be able to take it anymore. He got to the point where he was just getting sicker or he was just getting more and more worn down and he was feeling the physical effects. And that's the second thing I want to talk about too, is that if you never listened to my other show, The Overwhelmed Brain, I highly recommend you listen to the latest episode I just created yesterday as of this recording. Uh, yesterday was 5 20 2020, so May the 20th, and it's called The Emotional Aftermath of Getting Free of the Narcissistic Relationship. Tune into that. Go to the Overwhelmed Brain podcast, and you'll see that it'll be one of the bonus episodes. It's a Wednesday episode, and that's the title, The Emotional Aftermath of Getting Free of the Narcissistic Relationship. In that episode, I, I mention the physical effects of holding on to anger. Like, I held on to anger for so long in my life because my stepfather was so toxic that he made me sick. You know, of course, I can say, well, he didn't directly make me sick. It was my response to his behavior that made me sick. And we can look at that and go, yeah, that's true, but I didn't have the tools. I didn't have the resources to know how to respond to him. I was only 16. I mean, I was only a child when he came into my life. I was one. Of course, I didn't have the resources. Of course, I didn't know what to do. So yes, he made me sick. Now, I wasn't sick when I was young. I actually got sicker when I moved out of the house because the normal for me was living with a very scary individual that I feared. And when you're a child and that is your normal, you think there's nothing wrong. This is how it is. This is how people are. And it's scary because you develop these beliefs about the world, about other people, about relationships, about how people are supposed to show up. And even worse, you develop coping mechanisms and survival skills that in order to deal with things like this as a child, you have to figure out how to survive. And a child doesn't want to get hurt, so he or she will do everything they can and act in certain ways to make sure they don't evoke what I call drunk dad behavior. And um, it may not be a dad. It may not be a mom. It, it could be anyone in your life. But in my life, it was drunk dad behavior. He was my stepfather, but I call it drunk dad behavior because I don't want him to be drunk. Because when he was drunk, he was awful. And he did awful things. So I definitely didn't want him to be upset with me or I didn't want to be near him. So I practiced avoidance. I practiced non-confrontational behaviors. I practice no boundaries. That's pretty much me not defending myself because I learned that from my mom and on and on. There's all of these survival skills and coping mechanisms that we take out of our childhood and bring into the adult world. And now we have an adult relationship and suddenly we're using those same quote skills to survive, but it doesn't work. I mean, these only work with a particular individual that does particular behavior and when that behavior doesn't exist anymore, we're using the same responses to behavior that not even there. I mean, when you get into a toxic relationship, it's going to be very similar behavior for sure. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes we are responding to nothing. That's typically not the case with the people I talk about in this show. But for me, it was. For me, you know, I've talked about this before. I showed up as the dysfunctional toxic one. I was that person. And I know there are people listening to this show that are also that person because they write to me and say, I am the toxic one. I am the emotional abuser. And it took a long time and a bunch of butt kicking, <laughs> meaning people kicking my butt to the curb from my relationships, for me to finally realize, oh, I'm the common denominator of all my problems. I need to heal. I need to change. I need to fix myself. I was causing problems, and those problems are being highly judgmental, being highly critical, um, being the ultimate people pleaser, not showing who I really am, uh, not having boundaries, all kinds of problems that I brought into what should have been real, healthy adult relationships with very nice people, but I wasn't showing up in a healthy way. Anyway, let me bring it back to what I was going to say, which is holding on to negativity in any way affects you physically because I had indigestion and acidic stomach and bad breath for a, a long time because I held on to all this anger toward my stepfather 
and they didn't even know it. And I talk about that in the other episode. I told you about the overwhelmed brain episode. So check that out too. But my point is, uh, he, the person who wrote, said uh, he had a lack of energy. He was tired, bad digestion and stress. Yes, when you are around an emotionally abusive or manipulative or controlling person and you feel like you can't stand up for yourself or when you do, you get beat down and you're always feeling bad about yourself anyway, so it's harder to have boundaries and it's harder to honor yourself and get into alignment with what you value most. It's really hard to take that leap I was talking about. But when you do, you can heal physically. This starts to change your physiology. It starts to improve it. Because I think we can all agree that when we are in a negative space for a long time, we're going to have physical issues. It could be as simple as when you get angry and you hold it in, you tighten all your muscles and then you're sore and cramping the next day. It could be that. But even more chemically, when you are holding in anger like I did for many years, uh, I had so many stomach problems and I just couldn't eat tomatoes or onions or pepperoni and garlic, all my favorite stuff. I couldn't do it because it would burn. And when I was able to heal from my anger by admitting I was angry, by admitting that I hated my stepfather, by admitting all the negativity inside of me, stuff that I was pretty much taught not to have, you know, you shouldn't be angry, you shouldn't hate. I learned that stuff from my closest role model, my mom. My mom taught me how to not be angry because anger evoked bad behavior from her husband, my stepfather. And when you learn at a young age to not show anger, you also probably learn not to honor your boundaries by telling them what is acceptable and what isn't. Because a healthy response to someone's bad behavior is, whoa, you know, what's this about? I don't want this in my life. You need to work on that and don't introduce this into our relationship because if you have a problem, then you need to take care of that. You know, I'll, I'll be happy to help you if you need it, but you can't do that behavior around me because I won't allow it. I love myself too much for that. I respect myself too much for that. So I won't allow that behavior. So I'm going to make this clear. I won't accept that behavior. And if I see it again, I'm out. You know, conversations aren't going to go like that every time, but this is kind of a philosophy that you develop inside yourself and make it true. Make it real. Love and respect and have compassion for yourself. That way, when someone does bad behavior around you that you don't want in your life, you can step back and go, whoa, I don't want that in my life. And then you can actually do something about it. You can take that big step and protect yourself because you love you. At least that's how it's supposed to be. You love you, you respect you, you care about you. And I always like to look at it as there's a little child in me that's scared. I need to protect that child. I need to protect my inner child. That's, the, that's who I'm protecting. I'm not protecting me as the adult. The adult can take care of himself. I'm protecting that little child because that's the one that gets scared. That's the one that still has emotional triggers, that still needs healing, that needs protecting. And I think that's a great way to look at it. And coming back to this email, um, I wanted to mention the physical stuff that can happen when you're away from a toxic person that you actually start improving. Now, what is the extent? If you're dealing with some crazy thing and you don't know why you have it and you have a toxic person in your life, is there correlation? Here's a test. You ready? If you have any physical ailments or illness or problems that you're not sure where it comes from, or maybe you do have a clue where it comes from, or maybe you know exactly what it is. Um, And it may or may not be associated with a toxic person, but this is kind of a little test I like to do sometimes, is I'm going to ask you to imagine a toxic person that is either in your life now or was ever in your life, and when you think about this toxic person in your life, If you have any negative feelings or thoughts about them, I mean, let's get in touch with that first. Do you have any negative feelings or thoughts about them? 
This will only work if you have a yes to that. If you don't have a yes to that and you can't think of a toxic person, then it may not work. If you can think of one, great. Let's introduce a toxic person in our visual here, in our mind, that uh, we say yes. When I think of that person, there is negativity. There, I do feel it. So once we have that yes, yes, I feel it, I have negative thoughts about this person, then the next question is, how does it feel when that person looks at you and says, I can't believe how harmful I've been to you. I am right now just realizing how awful I've been. I'm so sorry. I, I did not know how bad you felt by my behavior. I didn't know how much damage I was doing. I'm so sorry. Now, when you try that on, how does this feel? I mean, you may not trust it, but let's just say they said that. And then they say, you know what? I am really toxic. I need to heal. I need to fix myself. I need, I need to get away from you. And I'm sorry, I have to. I, I have to get away. And I want you to be happy. I want you to be healthy. And I am unhealthy. I am going to get away from you now because you need this. We need to be apart and I can't tell you when I'm coming back or if I'm coming back. I'm going to go away. And they leave. And you don't see them anymore. Where are you with this? How does it feel? What's happening to you right now physically? This is the test. This is the test to help you understand how you're being affected physically by someone that uh, may not have your best interest in mind, that may be considered toxic or unhealthy. This is the test because if there was any release or relief or freedom or positive feeling or just less of a negative feeling, then I would say that they are affecting you in a way that is causing harm. Not just mentally, not just emotionally, but physically. And I think that's important to keep in mind because a physical deterioration leads to a mental and emotional deterioration as well. Because it's very difficult to be physically deteriorating and still maintain a sense of happiness. Now, that doesn't mean when you get older you, you're getting unhappier. There's a difference between someone draining your energy and being a constant obstacle to your happiness and growing old naturally. That's totally different because one, the body can adjust to, we adjust to it because everything's growing old at the same time. You know, I'm not talking about serious illnesses or anything like that. I'm talking about the natural aging cycle. It's a lot different than someone who's draining you and exponentially multiplying the rate you age. Because that's what it can seem like, that somebody in your life is wearing you down so fast. It feels like you're aging so fast and you're having all these problems. And if and when they aren't in your life anymore, those problems disappear. Or at least you have a better chance of getting healthier. Because now, like I said, there's less radiation in your relationship. And when you can get into this space of realizing where the toxic elements are in your life, you can become more diligent in who you allow in your life and what behavior you allow in your life. And I know a lot of these steps aren't easy, but I think about how much time do we have left on this earth before we really start taking care of ourselves. Really just say, you know what? I don't care what it takes. I need to take care of me. I do. Sometimes that means leaving. Sometimes that means something else. It is difficult for anyone to know your situation. Your situation is unique to you. Your ability to get through challenges is unique to you. You have the ability to get through a challenge of your heart, of your mind, of your body, of your feelings and emotions and everything that you are you have the ability to take that leap. And there is healing 
on the other side of that leap. Thanks for joining me today. Share this with others that might benefit. Love and Abuse is the official podcast of The Mean Workbook, an assessment and healing guide for difficult relationships. It contains a 200-point checklist to help you not only pinpoint the exact behaviors causing the difficulties in your relationship, but also clearly reveal to you why you leave so many interactions feeling bad. The workbook will help you make the next best relationship decisions for both of you. Use it to understand your own behaviors and how they affect those you love, or use it together to reveal issues to you that you both need to work on. Visit loveandabuse.com for more information. This show exists to remind you that you are not alone and you're not going crazy. You deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. You deserve honesty and sincerity. You deserve to be treated as worthy and significant because you are. Thanks again. We'll talk soon.